Hello there and welcome to today's episode of Insider Tips to Everyday Joy. I'm Lynn Horde, the Joy Coach, and today I wanted to talk to you about the power of play. First, let's start with a question. How often, truthfully, do you actually do something that's playful? By that, I mean have fun, do something that's really fun for you without the need for there to be an outcome. So just having fun for fun's sake. Do you do that very often? If your answer is no, don't worry, you are in good company. A lot of people would say the same thing when I ask them that question. Ever since I started sharing the message of joy and talking about bringing more play into your life, I've been so surprised at the resistance that people have to the idea of play. And there's probably a couple of reasons for that, two main ones. One is, when you think about play, you might think of it as something that's unproductive. Like we said, it doesn't have an outcome. Um, So it's unproductive and perhaps you think about it as a waste of time. So that could be one reason, you know, in our very busy, hectic, you know, must get things done kind of society that you might think don't have time for play. And the other reason is probably because... Even though when you were a kid you played and enjoyed it, as you've grown up into an adult, you may have um, taken on some misconceptions about what play means as an adult. For instance, I hear a lot of people say to me, you know, when we get into what their resistance is around play, they're like, well, you know, I don't want to be seen as foolish. I don't want people to think that I'm childish. And Some reasons behind that is because we don't want to be perceived as, you know, irresponsible or goofing off or, you know, the opposite, not responsible, particularly like in a work setting, for instance. So there are some misconceptions in there about what play means um, for us and how we might be perceived if we were to be more playful uh, that also gets in the way of us playing more. But we're really missing a trick here because there is some amazing benefits when you bring more play into your life on a couple of different levels and we'll talk about two main areas. So first of all, let's think about well-being. There are three great benefits when we bring play in um, from a well-being perspective and the first one is play actually triggers endorphins. So you know those lovely feel-good hormones that actually make us feel good and contribute to happiness. So that's one really good reason. And the other, another benefit is the fact that When we play, we actually become more relaxed. If you think about it, it's really hard to be stressed out and anxious when you're actually in the moment being playful. So um, it's actually a really natural stress reliever if you engage in play. And then the third reason is that when you play, you actually become more open. Like So kind of like you're emotionally open. You know, you can often feel a softness, a relaxation in your body. Um, And when you are more open, you can actually have deeper and better and stronger connections with those people around you, you know, your your loved ones, your family, your friends, or or your colleagues at work. So, you know, in terms of our well-being um, and those three things we just talked about, you know, there's some amazing um, benefits in our life. So that's on the well-being side. So what about at work? You know, we do this thing about eight hours, some of us a lot more than eight hours, you know, per day. So, you know, it's, we're, missing a lot, we're missing out on a lot of play and fun there if we can't bring that into our everyday life at work. Now, I understand, like, a lot of working environments, they're like, well, you know, they, they don't, they, like I said earlier, they see it as a waste of time or unproductive time, um, or as a person you might feel, you know, those misconceptions about, you know, being seen as irresponsible. But there are some huge benefits in terms of work if you were to bring play into your everyday So here's a couple. The first one is that research has actually proven that play actually activates ideas, it boosts creativity, and really enhances innovative thinking. Now, I'm sure that you'd agree they are three highly prized qualities, you know, in an employee and in a work environment. The second reason play is great in the work environment is that it's really invigorating. You know, whether it's you've gone to play ping pong or if you, you've created a presentation and you've brought your personality into it with colour and design or something like that, you know, those things are really invigorating because they make it fun for you, right? 
So when you're invigorated, guess what happens? We have more focus and hence we are more productive. So again, some really great qualities and um, things that are desired from employees at work. So again, those are another great benefits of bringing play into your work. So whether you're a self-employed person like me, a, a team, team manager or a business leader, for instance, there is a great business case for bringing in more play to your working life, uh, not only in the benefits to the business, but also to the employee. You know, if we can actually enjoy our day more, it's, it's going to incredibly enhance your experience of feeling like you have a joy for life. A man named Stuart Brown, he's a clinical researcher, a psychiatrist, and he founded the National Institute of Play. He actually describes play as it's the stick that stirs the drink. So in his words, he says that play is, it's the vital essence of life and the thing that makes life lively. And I would agree. It's the fun and the play is actually what infuses your life and makes it joyful and enjoyable in the everyday. So how do we bring more play into our everyday I've got three ideas for you. The first one is what I call the swirl effect. So of course, you know, at work and at home, there are often tasks or activities that we think are a bit boring or mundane or tedious, but we can actually infuse them with more play and more fun. And one of the simplest ways of doing that is thinking about um, over in this hand, you've got the things that you really enjoy, say it's music, you know, a beautiful view, um, coffee, wine, um, socialising, you know, so these are all the things that you enjoy. Over here is the task that you don't necessarily like, you know, it's like, mm, it's a bit boring. So what you need to do is swirl the two of those together. As an example, you know, if you've got a task that you do, boring, but you can actually do it with somebody else. Like, so bring in the social element, do it with somebody else, collaborate, you know, share ideas. If you, um, you know, if you're self-employed, you're doing your taxes, for instance, or your, your monthly accounts, you know, put on some music, have a glass of wine, you know, use your most favourite stationery. I get a lot of joy out of stationery personally, and it lifts my day up when I get to see my lovely pink stationery everywhere. So they're just a couple of simple ways. It's like, just get really creative, think outside the box, you know, we can add things in, um, or maybe you could even change environments. So just have a play with, you know, what can I add into this situation that would make it more fun, more playful and more joyful. The second thing you can do is reconnect with your, your childhood sense of play. So just take some time and have a think about when you were a, a child, what did you enjoy doing? Maybe it was um, Lego or, um, you know, jacks or marbles or, you know, colouring in. You know, there's a massive craze right now for adult colouring in books. And all of these things, um, you know, they give the, the brain a, um, a break from thinking. They keep you focused in the moment and they're fun, you know. So you don't necessarily have to do those particular things, but it's really good to have a think about what did I enjoy? Because that will help you get in touch with your sense of fun and play in the here and now and bring that more into your everyday. And the third thing you can do is start to get to know what I call your, your inner, inner playful spirit. I talk about this a lot in my group program, Joy School, because I really believe if you're in touch with that part of yourself, it naturally infuses your life with joy, more joy and more fun. So have a notice as you go throughout your day and your week, when are those things or what's happening around you, for instance, when you feel yourself light up from the inside, when a smile comes across your face, um, and just start to basically log those things, you know, what, what are those things that actually make me feel playful? Um, and if you're not sure, then like we said in the last point, just take a trip down memory lane and have a think back, what were those things back then? Maybe, you know, going to the park and going on the swings, going down the slippery side, you know, if you can release that resistance to, um, doing those things that you did as a kid, you know, you can still get in touch with that inner playful spirit now as an adult and it will infuse your life. So just as another example, a lady who did joy school, she hates hoovering, uh, but she loves music and she thought, okay, let me swirl those two together. 
So she got out the Hoover, put her favourite tunes on um, with some earphones, and she said, Lynn, I have never, she said, the first time in my life I've actually enjoyed hoovering. You know, so she was like literally dancing around the house, listening to her music and doing the hoovering. You know, so she turned that task into something that actually she could enjoy. So I'm sure that would be more fun if you guys did that as well. So just have a think, how can you swirl? I hope today has given you some food for thought and some inspiration on how you can get in touch with your own inner playful spirit, bring them out more so that they can infuse your life with joy and fun. If you think this has been helpful or know someone who could use um, use the nudge to, to bring more play into their life, please forward this to them. Also, if you have your own tips or techniques that actually help you get in touch with your inner, inner sense of play, please share in the comments below because what you do could inspire somebody else to do the same. Until next time, have a joyful week. I'll see you soon.